Hello and welcome to Apex Hours. My name is Johannes Fischer and today I would like to talk to you about demystifying computer telephony integration, also known as CTI, in Salesforce. Just a bit about myself. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for over 10 years, during which I spent my time at ISVs and at consultancies. I had the pleasure of working on two CTI adapters that are currently available on the App Exchange, one for the Genesis and one for the Amazon Connect platform. And if I'm not working or presenting, I spend a lot of my time with my family, my wife, my nine year old daughter, and our two kittens. Now, let's find out why it is important to talk about CTI. Well, it's because we are living in the age of the customer. The internet has empowered consumers to obtain information about the quality of products and services that an organization provides. Product reviews in online stores or on YouTube are a great example of that. And social media has given many people a voice to express their dissatisfaction when the service of a company does not meet their expectations. This empowers consumers to be more selective when deciding which company or product they want to interact with. And the market has noticed that and reacted to the situation. More and more organizations are making significant investments to provide a holistic experience to acquire new customers and more importantly, to retain them. We are seeing more subscription services that allow companies to create recurring revenue, which makes it really, really important that our customers are happy for an extended period of time. And how are companies doing that? By creating customer journeys through multiple experiences. For example, they are creating a brand experience, which influences how I feel when I think about an organization and its values. A lot of effort is spent on the product experience, which influences how I feel when using a product or service. And they are working hard, at least many do, to provide a great customer service experience, which influences how I feel when I interact with an organization while they are dealing with my requests. While many people have become a lot more digitally averse, and use more digital channels such as email, chat, or SMS, the phone channel remains a popular choice for customers, especially when dealing with complicated requests. I like this graphic for exactly that reason, that it separates simple and complex requests. It was released prior to the pandemic, and I would make the guess that the, guess that the phone channel has become even more important over the last 18 months. It allows us to connect to others, and connection is definitely something that many have been longing for. But that does not mean that other channels are important. They just serve a different purpose. Especially with chat and SMS, companies were able to significantly scale up their customer service experience through the advancement of natural language processing and AI bots. Through those, customers were able to access simple services at any time of the day without wait times, which significantly increased their service experience. But for today, we are going to focus on how companies are handling phone interactions in Salesforce and talk about the core concepts behind computer telephone integration. What I would like you to get out of this session is an understanding of how CTI works and the value that it can bring to your organization. Learn how Salesforce enabled CTI ventures to interact with their platform. And last, I would like you to I uh, would like to provide you with some tips and knowledge that help you to review a CTI product and how to compare it to other offerings in the market. All right. Let's start our descent with the 30,000 feet view. It's important to note that we are dealing with two different technology platforms. The contact center platform is responsible for managing the phone connections and the routing of phone calls to the agents. The Salesforce platform, on the other hand, allows agents to handle phone calls, view essential customer information, and execute any processes associated with the customer's request. 
NCTI has an important task to perform. It is the link that connects those platforms in a single user interface to provide one holistic experience when connecting a customer and the customer representative of your organization. As a result, it is responsible for not only providing the customer experience, CX, but also the employee experience, EX, here on the right hand side. Only when your employees are empowered to have all the information available that they need to handle the customer request, then they can focus on actually interacting with the customer instead of dealing with the technology. This is how you can amplify the experience that your customers have when contacting your organization. Keep in mind that your agents are the medium of your company. And the technology platforms and CTI are here to empower them to provide a positive customer experience. Okay, so let's continue our descent and look at the CTI more closely. The first thing we need to do is to break down the different directions on how conversations can go. There is outbound, which means that the organization is calling out to a customer that is mostly used in the context of a sales call. In this simplest scenario, your users are calling your customers individually. This often translates for a requirement to click to dial a contact or a lead um, and some automated tracking of the phone call. For example, your salespeople may call leads who showed interest in your product on your website and requested more information. But there are also more complex use cases, such as campaign calls, which allow for reaching customers in high volume. In a campaign scenario, your organization still reaches out to the client, but for the users, it will appear like they are receiving an inbound call. To give an example, a communication company may want to tell their existing customers about their high-speed internet product, and provide them with a special offer to upgrade their connection. Using a campaign mode allows uh, to run all those phone calls more efficiently. Either way, the purpose of the call is always known and the process behind the call should mostly be the same. And that's a big difference to inbound. Inbound stands for the customer service experience. At the time when the call arrives at the contact center, the organization does not know the purpose because the customer initiated the call. If I call a customer service hotline, there could be a question about my last bill or a product issue that I would like to report or anything else that is the reason for my call. Hence, the IVR has to take uh, steps to ask the customer to find out more so that it connect, can connect the customer to an agent that is best skilled to handle the request. The goal is to identify the type of request and solve it as fast as possible because time is really of the essence when dealing with inbound interactions. That's where an interactive voice response system uh, in short, IVR, comes into the picture. Traditionally, it's a series of messages and menu options that customers answer with the dial pad on their phones. Nowadays, some of those systems have become more interactive, thanks to the power of AI, but ultimately the purpose is still just to collect the information. For example, if you call your bank, you might be asked to provide your bank account or credit card number. Then additional information is collected, such as if you're looking for technical support, accounting, or so on. And at the end, you will be connected to the agent. At that point, it is critical that the agent has access to the information that was provided earlier. There's nothing more frustrating to me when I enter my account details in the IVR, and then once I reach the agent, I get asked to provide the same information again. This is unnecessary because the information was already provided and the technology exists for the agent to see 
what I had input earlier and to allow him or her to immediately continue with the process. As mentioned earlier, with the help of AI, the IVR has become more interactive and it is capable of providing customers with a lot of self-service options. But in order to do that, the contact center platform needs to be integrated with the CM in order to get the visibility to the data that is related to my, uh, to my account. So we can see that there's a lot of possible scenarios in inbound calls, for inbound calls, sometimes with an agent in the picture and sometimes without. All of them need to be supported by the technology and integration in a seamless way. Let's summarize the flow we just talked about for inbound cases visually. Okay, so we have our customer, Tracy, here on the top left, and our contact center agent, Sam, at the bottom left. When Tracy makes a call, she will first be connected to the contact center platform, hitting the IVR, uh, as I just described. And she will make her initial selections. The contact center will most likely create some information, such as her contact information based on her phone number, or if she provided a case number, the details about the case. Eventually, the call will be directed to Sam, who is currently available to talk to a customer and skilled to handle Tracy's request. Sam is going to answer the phone call using the CTI adapter in Salesforce, which is the box highlighted in red. He uses the phone controls hosted in a widget to typically um, that, that typically sits at the bottom of the service console and pops out when the phone call arrives. With a widget, he can answer the call, put it on hold, transfer it, um, and look at some of the data that was provided in the IVR. And in addition to the phone controls, Sam gets something that is called a screen pop, which is showing Tracy's Salesforce contact record, or if she provided a case number, the case recorded um, and linked to her account and contact. With all those details on the screen, Sam can immediately jump into the action. Now that we know where CTI fits into the customer service picture, let's see what Salesforce provides to enable this integration. At first, way back when, there was the Salesforce Desktop CTI adapter, also known as the CTI Toolkit, which has been end of life since spring 17 and is therefore not listed on the slide. Its successor was OpenCTI, which has been around since beginning of the decade, of the last decade. It is based on a JavaScript API that was initially built for the Salesforce Classic Console as Lightning wasn't even around at the time. Later, when Lightning was released, the OpenCTI APIs were adopted for the Lightning platform. Salesforce Service Cloud Voice was first announced at Dreamforce 19 and was made generally available in summer 2020. It is Salesforce's first pure voice offering, which uses Amazon Connect behind the scenes as a contact center platform. It uses a Salesforce branded soft phone UI and provides some advanced features such as a call recording access and live transcriptions right from within your Salesforce pages. Now, one of the core challenges with CTI is and on the Salesforce platform has always been the Salesforce omnichannel integration because agents had to deal with two different widgets in the console that were each connected to their own routing engine. A routing engine is basically the software that is responsible for taking a phone call or an email and delivering it to the agent. But having two different widgets connected to two different contact center platforms can actually cause conflict where two interactions would arrive at the same time when there should only really be one delivered. In the best case scenario, existing OpenCDI solutions were able to synchronize their agent presence status, 
which agents are using to let the routing engine know if they are available for a call, email, chat, etc., or not. So let's just repeat that again. As an agent, I'm either available to answer a phone call or handle an email interaction or chat, or I'm busy doing something else, in which case the contact center platform should not deliver any new interactions to me. And the way how I let the platforms know is by providing status information. So I can notify the system that I'm available for a call or that I'm busy with other things like a meeting, my lunch break, or something else. And we see these things later in our demo as well. Without integration, I would have to set my status in two different systems, each individually, in order to let the contact center platforms know that I'm busy. And when I say contact center platforms, I actually include here Salesforce Omnichannel Router as well. So as I said, I have to set um, the, my status individually on each, in each of the widgets, and that's easy to forget, right? Uh, this creates a poor customer experience, then as a caller could be hearing a ringing sound, but the call would not get answered because the agent eventually walked away from his desk, but only set the status to busy or not available in the OmniCenter widget. It also creates a challenge when it comes to reporting or something called workforce management, which is what many bigger organizations are using to plan their staffing needs depending on call volumes. It allows them to make sure that they have the right number of agents with the right skills to handle the interactions the fastest way possible at any given time of day. Now, if the two systems are being integrated, which is something that Salesforce supports through the APIs that it provides, agent will, agents will only have to set their status once in one widget, and it will automatically be synchronized to the other widget and therefore to the other platform. Needless to say that dealing with those two UI is still a more complex way of interacting with the system. And from an agent experience perspective, or employee experience perspective, this is not optimal, not an optimal way of dealing with things. And that's exactly the reason why Salesforce has further evolved the Salesforce Service Cloud's voice solution and recently announced the integration of the two UIs into a single one. So Salesforce Service Cloud Voice initially was a dedicated software UI and earlier this year, Salesforce has announced a, user, a new user interface that will combine the Salesforce Omnichannel and the phone widget. This was first introduced for Amazon Connect-based all-in-one offering that Salesforce had. But soon thereafter, Salesforce also provided a new set of APIs for CTI vendors, which is called Salesforce Service Cloud Voice for Partner Telephony and allows to connect the Salesforce Unified widget to any third-party contact center platform. Users will start to use a single Salesforce-branded widget that can be powered by many platforms behind the scenes. The new API is just rolling out with the selected list, uh, selected list of partners, but I'm sure many more vendors will join in and utilize the API for their soft phone experiences soon. What's important to note is that Salesforce CTI has become a bit of a commodity. So why did I say that? The reason is the number on the screen. When I searched for CTI on the App Exchange, I found over 85 results of different listings that are available today. And Salesforce customers have to choose from that selection if they are looking for a contact center platform with CTI integration. So this is huge. What requirements would you look for when comparing those products? What features might be critical? Well, let's look at some of those core features in more details. To do that, I decided to separate the features into three categories. And by no means is what you're seeing here complete. It is just a highlight of the most common type of features that are available today. 
but they are certainly more and each product has some special features that it highlights and where it stands out um, in each of the categories. This list is supposed to give you a starting point and common ground to compare the offerings that are available in the market. The standard features on the left hand side are simple screen pop and click to dial. These are commodity features because everyone does a simple screen pop and click to dial and they typically show that immediately in their demos. Simple screen pops in this case refer to just popping the contact information for a phone number that the customer is calling from. When we're dealing with more advanced features, that's where the different products are already starting to differentiate. And here, for example, we can talk about configurable screen pop data. As I said, simple screen pops are based on just the phone number. But in advanced environments, you can configure what data inputs a screen pop should be based on. If a customer calls in and all I have is the phone number, well, then use that phone number for the screen pop. If the phone number exists in Salesforce, pop the contact or a lead. And if it doesn't exist, maybe a screen pop a form to create a new record. But what if the call was about a specific case? and the customer actually provided that case number. Well, then you would want the screen pop to actually pop that case. The most specific piece of information should always be the entry point for the conversation since the agent can easily navigate to all related records, such as the contact or account, from there. Call activity records are most commonly created by all soft phones when the call ends. What you often want, however, is a little bit more flexibility in the way how they are being created. Maybe even select specific fields from the phone call that can be mapped to custom fields. Next, accessing call recordings right out of Salesforce is also considered an advanced feature as many applications require users to log into the contact center platform to access those recordings. And finally, let's take a look at the fully integrated solution. Those platforms are able to perform queries and data modifications right from the IVR. One important aspect is here that the platform is capable of creating a new record and to pass on the ID of that newly created lead, contact, or case. For the screen pop. Two-way data access where the soft phone can display the data that is coming from the contact center platform as attributes of the call. And vice versa, the agent should be able to provide details about his work, for example, the number of uh, case that she created, which could be attached to the call so that another agent could have access to the information or that it could be reported on. Post-call actions, uh, they, help to, they help workflows and processes to save the agent's time to get ready for the next call. And supervisor functionality allows call center supervisors to view in Salesforce what the status of each agent is, how many calls are waiting in the queue, and other statistics. Ideally, the supervisor also has the ability to listen into a call and possibly coach the agent. And last but not least, with the technology improvements in artificial intelligence, we are now able to have full transcripts of phone calls being created either in real time or um, at the end of the call. The benefit of this is that you can search uh, the information and read it post-mortem, not just the information, but the conversation and read it post-mortem without actually needing access to the call recording. So as you can see, there's a lot of functionality available today. Not every product is providing all of these features. It depends on your use case and whether something important or not, whether um, it, is, it is critical to you. 
your call volumes, your type of calls, and your processes to handle those calls, all these things will determine what type of contact center platform and what level of CTI integration you need to be looking for with the goal to provide the best customer experience possible. Let's give you a closer look at some of those features in action. For that, I have prepared a short demo using Amazon Connect's CTI adapter. Why did I use Amazon Connect? Uh, it's for two reasons. Number one, there are actually modules available on Trailhead that uh, describe the integration and the setup of the adapter. And secondly, Amazon has a free tier that you can use to prepare such a demo um, and not accrue a lot of cost uh, for it. So now we're looking at my service cloud console and at the bottom here I have the button for the phone widget where I'm already logged into my Amazon Connect phone UI and the service, uh, the omnichannel widget, which I'm currently set to in an offline state. Now, when I go to my phone widget, which is also in an offline status and make myself available, what you will see that just behind the scenes, the scene, the omnichannel swi uh, switch to online as well. Here, I'm now available to handle an interaction with both of those tools. Let's route through a call and see the screen pop in action. While I'm dialing my IVR, um, what is going to happen now, uh, we're going to handle two different phone calls. Phone call number one is going to be about uh, an incoming call where only the phone number is available. And phone call number two is about a phone call where the customer provided a case number. priority of an individual contact in the queue and will allow you to request a call back and be called when an agent is available. Press 1 to move to the front of the queue. Or the timing queue is less than 5 minutes. Press 1 to go into queue or 2 to enter a call back number. Okay, great. So you can see here the call coming in. I will hang up um, to not have the phone call running and create an echo. Um, but what you also saw is like shortly after the phone call arrived, we got the screen pop here on the right hand side for Edna. So what the agent immediately sees is the person who is contacting them and, and I can greet the customer immediately by name. And then from there through Salesforce's switch user interface, I have the ability to um, basically uh, dive into all the other records that are associated with Edna's contact or account. Now I'm going to switch quickly to my lunch break. And as you can see, again, the status was changed on the omnichannel side as well because all the present statuses are synchronized. I'm going to close the contact and get ready for my second phone call going to minimize that and go ready in this time in the omnichannel widget and minimize all my phone uh, my phone widgets or my contact center widgets. And now as I'm dialing in and go through the IVR, I will be attaching a case number to the call. And as you see the phone call popping, and again, I'm just hanging up here to prevent any echo, you saw that instead of the contact center, uh, sorry, instead of the contact record, the case record was screen popped on my screen. So I can now not only greet Edna by name and say, hi, Edna, um, thanks for calling. Uh, are you actually calling about your case 1016, which is about the maintenance guidelines for your generator? So you can see how a very different experience can be created by immediately having the information available on the screen without having to go through the process of asking for the same details, um, again, that the customer already provided in the IVR. So 
now that we've seen those things in action, let's take a look a little bit on how those are configured behind the scenes. First, we're looking at what is called the AC lightning adapter, which is just a representation of the um, contact center for my particular agent. There are some details here on the top, and then at the bottom, we are looking at the present sync rules. The present sync rules are basically the configuration records that map the different statuses between Amazon Connect and Salesforce Omnichannel. And we have two records for each status. So we have one status record that says change, like uh, synchronize available in Amazon Connect to Salesforce Omni. And then one record that says synchronize Salesforce Omni's channels available status back to Connect. And so we set that up for all the different statuses that were available. When we're looking at the screen pop that we saw, where this is also fully configurable um, to something that is called the CTI script. Here we're looking for the unconnecting event, which is Amazon's term for when a phone call arrives at the agent desktop. If I'm looking at the bottom here, I see a state engine that is going to be processing the phone call at the time of the arrival. And I can configure what it does, like I created this here. And what it first does is actually looking at an attribute on the, case, uh, on the call with a name case number. If the attribute is there because the customer provided the case number in the IVR, it will return that value. And if it's not there, it will return a default value that is an A. Next, there's a decision going to be made. And the decision is based on the value that was retrieved in this uh, get contact attribute node. And if that value is not an A, then we are executing a screen pop that is based on that value. Um, the way how the screen pop is executed is actually defined in something called the softbone layout, which we see on the top, and I'll get to in just a second. But what happens if the case number is not there? Then we reach the bottom screen pop configuration that uses the contact's phone number instead of, uh, instead of the case number, and then executes the screen pop request against Salesforce's APIs the same way how it was done in the, in the case scenario. So what happens then, Salesforce behind the scenes is going to take the data that was provided and search for records. And then based on the result, it decides on what actual screen is going to be popped to the user. And the search is being executed using the soft phone layout configuration where you define what type of objects are actually valid to be searched for. And then for each of the object, the screen pop behavior for when a result and a match was found. So for instance, let's say if a no matching record was found for the phone number of the contact, well then maybe pop a form to create a new lead. Or don't put any screen pop at all, or have a specific flow that could be executed in that case that will collect the customer information, maybe perform a search, and or create the record details um, in Salesforce. But if the record was found, as we just saw in the demo, it will pop the detailed page for either the contact or the case. So this was just a very brief overview about simple screen pop scenarios, as well as the, the present synchronization between the soft phone and omnichannel, and how those things are configured in a more advanced uh, soft phone CTI adapter. Let's go back to our presentation. All right, so let's summarize what, you just, what we just talked about and saw and look at it through the lens of someone who is evaluating a CTI adapter. As mentioned earlier, it's important to differentiate between outbound and inbound scenarios. And for each scenario, look at a different set of features. I categorize those features into three different groups. The user interface enables the agent experience and is complemented by features around the omnichannel integration. And last, 
the IVR integration, while not a core feature of the CTI platform, still plays an integral part in the customer and agent experience from a CM perspective. In the outbound scenario, it could be used when running a campaign if all the data was not already loaded into the campaign records. Either way, the goal is to empower your agents with those features and at the end, to create a great customer experience. The inbound scenario is more complex, as we already know, and hence we are looking at a larger list of features to consider. While the user interface requirements are pretty much the same like outbound, there are more considerations when it comes to the integration with Omnichannel and the IVR. For instance, capacity awareness will not just monitor the agent status, but also the number of interactions uh, an agent is handling at any given time. This may then result in either plat in the platform deciding not to route any new interactions. Many general recommend my, uh, my general recommendation would be to separate the voice channel from other channels because it will simplify the work for the agents and the setup of the two platforms and the CTI application. Here's a quick story though that will highlight how all those features could work together. Let's take our agent, Nia, who is starting her shift today. She signs into Salesforce, which immediately loads her service console and the Lightning interface. At the bottom left, the CTI widget is starting up. Immediately logging into her account, but marking her as offline from a status perspective. Nia is a blended agent, so she actually handles emails from time to time using Salesforce Omnichannel, which is also currently set to an offline status. In the meanwhile, Richard is having issues with his internet connection and decides to call his cable provider. When his call arrives in the IVR, it queries to see if Richard has any open cases. He currently does not have any open case, so the IVR asks him to provide a brief summary about the issue that he is calling about. The IVR then creates a case with a transcription of his issue in the description field. And the ID of that case is attached to the call for a screen pop later. So Nia is ready to take her first interaction. She sets her status to available in the soft phone, which also makes her available in Omni, and her phone starts ringing. This will put her Omni widget into a busy status for, an, for the incoming call. Because the phone call had a case ID attached, the case pops showing the description that Richard provided. Nia greets Richard by name and confirms the issue description that he provided in the RVR, creating a very personalized experience. As it turns out, Richard may need to get his modem replaced, so Nia creates a service request for a site visit and adds the work order number to the phone call, which will be helpful for reporting purposes. Since this is all she can do for Richard today, Richard, Richard hangs up the call. She creates a phone call, phone call task in Salesforce under his account, and this creates a phone call task in Salesforce under his account, and screen pops that task to Nia to provide some final details. Once done, Nia closes her tabs for Richard's call and sets her status back to available. As you can see, those features can enable a rich experience for both the customer and the agent. This was a very sophisticated example that not every contact center needs to provide in this depth. However, the functionality and capabilities are available today, so all of this can be accomplished with the right tools. Needless to say that everything I covered here today is really just touching the surface of the topic as a whole. I hope you took away some of the common concepts of what CTI enables, 
got an understanding on how CTI functions, looking at it from a big picture perspective as the connection between the two platforms, as well as what it means on the lower level when you deal with the individual features. I also hope that this presentation enables you to take a better look at the CTI offering, offerings on the App Exchange should you be in the need of one. However, this conversation obviously is just the beginning. You may want to continue your journey on Trailhead, so I selected three different modules that I believe should be really helpful to uh, continuing your path on learning more about CTI. And with that, I wanted to thank all of you for listening in and watching my presentation. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm available on Twitter, LinkedIn, and look forward to connecting and to have more conversations about this topic, which I'm very passionate about. And then I would like to thank Amit and Epix Hours for the opportunity to give this presentation. I can only recommend to check out the many other uh, talks and that are on the YouTube channel. There's so much great content from experts in the Salesforce ecosystem available. So please continue to watch as the work that Amit is doing is absolutely fantastic. And thanks again. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you soon again.